Now, let's talk about constructivism. As I mentioned just now, there are only three uh, principal pillars to educational psychology. It's the behaviorist, cognitivist, and the humanist, right? Now, or the humanist, sometimes some people call it phenomenologist. Now, from the cognitivist has two sub-branches, that's basic, the pure cognitivist, and now subsequently work from a social perspective are now labeled as constructivist or constructivism. Now, the first thing is, if let's say a baby was born, okay, and soon takes after her first step, in that short period, the amount of learning and understanding of her immediate environment is enormous. Okay, these early years are significant because it provides the basis for language, physical dexterity, social understanding and emotional development. For the rest of the child's life, just imagine the vast amount of knowledge and how we have been acquired by the time the child enters school. Increasingly, there is evidence to suggest that there is not everything eh, the child learns is taught by adult. The child teaches herself by absorbing information and experiencing around the world. For example, recently, uh, my daughter is three years old and I thought, being a cheapskate father, I wanted to go and buy her one of those, you know, the fake toy computers that teaches you language and skills. And I discovered that they are not cheap. They range uh, from three to five hundred dollars if you go to Toys R Us and if you buy the, you know, uh, and then subsequently they have only certain amount of games and a certain kind of learning that you, it can produce. And, and anything more, you have to buy an entire new gadget. And then I managed to, after a lot of uh, reflection, I thought maybe getting her an iPad uh, would be a good thing to move forward, uh, since it could be a family uh, utility thing that all of us could, I could keep it down, uh, easily accessible to my mom reading newspaper, me coming in doing some office work, and my daughter using it uh, to learn. And I was astonished, within two weeks, she had mastered the entire use of iPad. I mean, initially I was... You know, take, turning it on and showing, uh, making sure that it's in front of me. I was uh, terribly possessive, of course. But within two weeks now, that she can actually on the iPad, go through the entire suit, choosing the programs that she wants to work with, to the point where she can go to YouTube. Uh, obviously, she can't read and write, so she can't type out her own search, but she can know how to go to history, pick up the YouTube video that you have watched previously, and then subsequently use the suggestions to go forward and I mean trust me I'm no one taught her this by trial and error experimenting going and using what is favorable to her and since it's done repetitively and getting the favorable outcome uh, and she moved forward so from Vygotsky's perspective a lot of these things are constructed by environment it was not so much taught by age it was having the right environment having the right triggers having me being there or my mom or whoever was there uh, she saw the value in participating. So that is where this constructivism is, is going to come in uh, or is coming in from. Now, constructivism is a perspective of learning that is origin from works of Brunner, Piaget, Vygotsky. The knowledge, belief and skills an individual brings to learning, learning situations should be given due importance. Learners are not passive recipients of information, but they are active agents engaging in constructing their own knowledge. According to Piaget, this is done through three uh, mechanisms, okay? namely uh, through assimilation, fitting in new experience with existing mental structure, accommodating, uh, accommodation, revising the existing schema because of the new experience, and then forming an equilibrium seeking cognitive stability through assimilation and accommodation. In other words, learning involves constructing of new understanding by combining prior learning with new information. In other words, knowledge is constructed in the mind of the learner, um, so says Brooks and Brooks. Now, if this is the case, then knowledge is seldom transferred intact. I mean, this is the biggest 
issue if you are a school teacher or of any level because you package information and you deliver it and and just imagine this you have packaged a bundle of information right in a nice wrapped paper uh, paper parcel and you fling it across the room to the students and imagine the parcel tearing apart and the information now comes off of his bundle and scatters so different students get different parts of it so it cannot be as efficient as you taking the parcel and just handing it over and a student and bring uh, uh, accepting the parcel as it is knowledge from a cognitivist perspective or especially from a constructivist perspective it doesn't that work that way it's not like the picture that uh, the uh, goldfish jumps from from one bowl to another intact it doesn't when it jumps out it disintegrates it it breaks the reason why it breaks is because people on the receiving end are not homogeneous they have different prior learning different experience so they will they will relate to the information differently according to glassfield knowledge is a result of an individual subject's constructive activity not a commodity that somehow resides outside the norm and can be conveyed or instilled by diligent perception or linguistic communication so basically in in in, in layman layman's language knowledge is like a lego building blocks you need to participate to get it it you cannot just transfer from from external to internal knowledge is something which is constructed personally by an individual in an active way and try to give meaning to that knowledge learner or learners construct their own knowledge by looking for meaning and order they interpret what they hear read and see based on their perception on and previous learning habits and experience students who do not have appropriate background knowledge will be unable to accurately hear and see what is before them so from the constructivist uh point of view they emphasize that learning is a social activity the environment in which young people learn has very powerful influence on them okay the subtle and the overt cues that provide or that's provided by the community influences them often it is the social experience rather than what is taught in the school that accounts for much of the variation in students learning the community is the basic fabric of students learning encompassing the value beliefs norm habits and behaviors of culture this is what vygotsky was pushing for if learning is a social and students are social it seems logical that a social engagement is more powerful or is a very powerful vehicle for enhancing learning cooperative collaborative and group investigation methods allow students to discuss ideas beliefs concepts and misconceptions uh with the peers and teachers so cooperation collaboration to you know to understand concept and misconceptions are very powerful as if they are treated in a collaborative manner learning is enhanced when students learn how to learn together engaging in a serious discussion examining important topics and have shared responsibility for applying what they know in a new situation organizing for this kind of learning is much more complex kind of teaching compared to lecturing and demonstrating